Okay, I've got my hands on three of these quite ornately veneered, uh, well I guess it's not really that ornate, I mean the veneering pattern is quite something, it's quite spectacular, but it's actually quite a simple veneer, just four burrs essentially, and I'm trying to work out what to do with it. I'm kind of tempted to make a mitered plinth. This is one of the rare occasions where you might want to use mitres to make a plinth and it is because the pattern of the veneer is so interesting that you'd want to seamless join around something that you're making with this this effect. Um, what could the plinth be used for? Uh, it could be left on the side of a couch and you could put your coffee in it, maybe it can hold a plant pot, I don't know, something decorative. I feel like it's been French polished as well. It's not the best conditions, a few chips in places. Um, it be enough to do all sides on the top and leave the bottom open and then have a spare for God knows what. So I'm just going to go over all the parts and make sure there's no bits of metal that might damage my table saw. Because this is quite old, um, I want to make sure I wear a dust mask uh, just because I'm not sure what the paint is in particular or the varnish. Um, and then I'll have my extractor on and the air scrubber at the same time. My first cuts were directly in the middle of the boards where the veneer had been joined together. I will then use this line to cut from, running it along the fence to produce parallel sides. I think I've got a bit of a problem. I think my driving knife is a little bit thicker than my blade. About 0 0.1 mil thicker. It was enough to feel a pinch, so I decided to change over to a thinner riving knife. Okay, I swapped over to a thinner riving knife, so this should uh, should help. I was finding it was pinching a bit, and I had to push a little bit more than what I would normally do to get it through the, the blade. It's a general rule. I think when you're doing anything in the workshop, if you're using excessive force to do something, you're probably going to make a mistake, something's going to go wrong or something is wrong. Okay, I'm going to use my bevel box now to set the blade to 45 degrees. Okay, so to minimize making mistakes, what I'm going to do is cut one side of all the four pieces that are going to make the sides of the plinth, and then I'll do the opposite um, mitre. I'm now cutting all the side pieces parallel with mitered edges. I'm also making them as wide as I possibly can, but later I will trim them down depending on how large I manage to make the top. You can really see the sawdust kicking off this machine. I should do something about that. No. 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 Okay, I've just gone and cut this and realised actually it's not square. So while I had made the two mitres on either side parallel, 
the bottom edge was not necessarily at a right angle to those two new surfaces. So what I will do now, this is a mistake, I don't think I'm going to be able to save this. I'm going to have to lift the, this blade back up to 90 degrees uh, and cut a straight line while keeping this on the sledge. And then square it up and, and do one end of all the other side pieces. What this will allow me to do is to cut at 90 degrees through the boards that I just made parallel with my previous cuts. That new cross cut will be my reference to make the opposite sides also parallel. I'm now setting up a simple extension clamp for my sledge which I can use to repeat larger cuts. My table saw fence doesn't extend far enough so I'm having to use some old school methods of clamping the fence down as far as I can. To try and get it parallel with the blade I measured the front and back of the fence against the mitre track in the cast iron tabletop. I know that's pretty parallel to the blade. I've lined up the fence against one of the tracks and I'm just gonna go for it. If it fucks up I think I'm gonna get rid of this table saw. Anyway here goes for it. It's not ideal, you shouldn't really cut something that's a lot longer than it is uh, thicker but it's fairly deep so that will ride on the fence sort of okay any thinner I uh, wouldn't really feel comfortable doing this um, I'm just gonna do one measure it and just check that it's okay surprisingly it seemed to cut pretty well so I carried on doing the rest I then cut the top down and trimmed the four side pieces a little to match the dimensions of the top. So this material isn't entirely flat. What you find is you have to widen the angle above 90 to start to close the gap. Um, that's quite normal if it's bowing a little bit, uh, but there's a way of dealing with that. You've got to get all the pieces round together, glue them up, um, and then actually push them in, tighten them up a bit. Uh, and there's a technique for that. And what we'll do is use the off cuts to help us with the gluing process. We'll just need to find some rope. So I'm going to use the nail gun with the 23 gauge pins. I'm using 25mm uh, long ones just to pin it in a couple places so I don't have to worry about it falling apart. A nasty experience with an elk going once with the air blasted out into my eyes, so I wear goggles now.
I've tied some rope around the plinth and popped two lengths of the offcuts for either face. The method is very simple, you push the lengths towards the corners and this tensions the rope and pushes the mitered corners towards one another. This helps apply the clamping force where you are gluing. You could probably also do this with a ratchet strap and thicker pieces of wood but as the surface is already finished I don't want to scuff it up. So this is quite taut now, I think I should have got this a bit higher to be honest. Let me see if I Right, while waiting for it to dry, I've just gone and ripped the wall down there. It looks pretty good, but there's still an ever so slight gap in a few places. But there's a technique to hide this, which doesn't involve filling. Using a spoon or rounded bar, just roll the edge so it pushes down and helps close the gap. Unfortunately the finish is a little brittle and I can hear it cracking in places so I can't use this method as much as I'd like. I'll try it to dig up a little bit, although I think the veneer is just a bit too fragile. You can hear it cracking. And the best bit is you've got a little keyhole there. Okay, the last thing I'm going to do is take a bit of sandpaper, wet and dry, and just give it a quick sand, knock it back a bit, uh, and then wipe everything down with a damp cloth, and then I'll decide whether to just throw a couple coats of new varnish on there. Whatever this stuff's on there, it's starting to crack. It probably should really be scraped off, but I'm worried I'll end up damaging the uh, veneer underneath. I think it's so thin. I'm going to leave that where it is now. I could also glue some 2x2 two two within the plinth for additional strength. If I decide to varnish it, I'll upload some photos to my Instagram account, so keep an eye on things there for updates. And finally, thanks again for watching.